Hello students, welcome to the second lecture on wave optics. In the first lecture, we try to understand various theories on light by eminent scholars like Isaac Newton, Christian Huygens, Thomas Young, James Maxwell and Albert Einstein. In the session, we also try to understand what is wave optics and why do we need wave optics. So, as a continuity from there, we choose the wave theory proposed by Christian Huygens and try to understand that in detail. The foundation of wave optics is wave front. Now, what do we mean by wave front? Now, wave front is defined as the locus of all particles of the medium vibrating in the same phase at a given instant. Now, to picturize it, assume that we have a point source from where the light emerges out. If I try to identify the points or the particles of the medium which are in the same phase at an instant of time, I am going to get a circle for a two dimensional structure and a sphere for a three dimensional structure. So, this is what a wavefront is. To understand more, let us go with one more diagram. So, all the particles on a plane at an, at an instant of time, try to understand, at an instant of time will have the same phase. We will understand the concept of wavefront better when we go through various types of wavefront. So, here in this diagram, we have a two dimensional figure as well as a three dimensional figure. If you focus on three dimensional figure, you find that, that the wavefront emerges out from a point source. So, from a point source, there is a spherical structure which is emerging out. I have taken only half of the structure so that you can understand from where the spherical structure gets emerged. It emerges from the center. So, it goes on enlarging. Now, why it is enlarging? It is enlarging because the phase of the vibrations increases as it propagates further. On two dimensional structure, you find that, that this spherical structure have come from a pinhole. So, this kind of wavefront is called spherical wavefront. Now, what spherical wavefront is defined as? The spherical wavefront is produced by a point source of light or the wavefront that is produced by a point source is called spherical wavefront. So, here from a point source, the rays emerge outwards. So, if I join all the particles or the points which are in same phase, I get a circle in two dimensional whereas it is a sphere in three dimension. The spherical wavefront can be converging as well as diverging. So, in the last diagram, the wavefront that we saw was a diverging wavefront because the spherical surfaces emerged outwards, they travelled outwards. There may be a case where the spherical surfaces move inward. So, it is called a converging spherical wavefront. So, we have two kinds of spherical wavefronts, converging and diverging. So, we have seen diverging. Now, let us try to understand what do we mean by converging. When the light passes through the lens, the light rays tend to meet at a point and this kind of converging rays produces converging spherical wavefront. These kinds of rays which converge at a point produces converging spherical wavefront. So, here the wavefront is converging. After spherical wavefront, let us go with one more. So, here if you see 
there is a kind of cylindrical surfaces growing out from a line a line gives out cylindrical surfaces on a two dimensional diagram if you see instead of a pin hole in the last case here what do we have we have we have a slit and from a slit it is giving out a cylindrical surfaces so as the geometry suggests we call this wave front as cylindrical wave front if pin hole is the source of spherical wave front the slit is the source of cylindrical wave front or the linear light source is a source of cylindrical wave front so when the source of light is linear such as slit the cylindrical wave front is produced we can go with its diagram something like this where s is the source of light which is in the linear form after spherical and cylindrical we have third kind of wave front as we have seen here all the particles on the plane are in same phase so if i try to choose the particles if i try to join all the particles which are in same phase continuously with respect to the time then the structure that i get will be the plane moving in a particular direction so thus the wave front is called plane wave front now why do we get plane wave front how do we get plane wave front now assume that there is a source of light at the center of the earth and the wave front emerges out and i measure the wave front or i observe the wave front when the waves reach the surface now as a whole due to a point source at the center of the earth the wave front that reaches the surface is spherical in nature but rather than seeing the whole structure if i choose a part of the wave front it appears plane it it appears flat as the ground appears so therefore the plane wave front is defined as a small part of spherical or cylindrical wave front due to the distant source which will appear plane okay whenever the source is at larger distance from the point of observation we can only see its part and that small part appears as plane so thus we have three types of wave fronts spherical cylindrical and plane so it purely depends on the type of sources that we choose if we choose a point source or a pin hole it gives us a spherical wave front if we choose a linear source or a slit we get a cylindrical wave front now whether spherical or cylindrical if the point of observation if it is too far from the actual source then the wave front appears as plane wave front now let us try to understand the huygens principle this is the foundation for the whole wave theory that has been proposed now in the diagram we have a bold violet line which consists of red dots now this violet line represents the initial wave front so it is our initial wave front so since the wave front is straight let us assume that it is a plane wave front and these red dots on the purple line represents the source of light and assume that if these individual points if they act as source of light then what they do as a source of light emerge gives out the spherical wave fronts point source gives out spherical wave fronts every point on the wave front if it is thought to be acting as the secondary source of light it should also give us what it should also give us a spherical structure emerging out these spherical structure that emerge out are called secondary wavelets and to these wavelets if we draw a common tangent we are going to get a wave front in a later time now let me explain this once again if i consider a wave front which is plane in nature if i consider a plane wave front 
and then if I assume that each and every point on this wavefront acts as the secondary source of light, then when I am choosing point as a source of light, from a point source I get the spherical wavefront emerging out. So, all these points gives out the spherical wavefront and these spherical wavefronts are called secondary wavelets. And if I join the line, if I draw the tangent to all these secondary wavelets, I am going to get a wavefront in the later time. So, in text, Huygens principle is written as each point of the wavefront is the source of a secondary disturbance and the wavelets emanating from these points spread out in all directions with the speed of the wave. These wavelets emanating from the wavefront are usually referred to as secondary wavelets and if we draw a common tangent to all these spheres or the secondary wavelets, we obtain the new position of the wavefront at a later time. Try to understand what this Huygens principle is by constructing your own diagram. Now, let us try to understand what happens to these wavefronts when they undergo reflection and refraction. So, first let us go with the refraction phenomenon. When a plane wave undergoes refraction by a thin prism, now what we find is after refraction, the nature of the wavefront remains plane, but it appears to be bent. It is because the prism leads to deviation. And what happens if the same plane wavefront if it is incident on a lens? When a plane wavefront is incident on a lens, then the refracted wavefront will be spherical in nature. The plane wavefront gets converted into spherical wavefront and the radius of that spherical wavefront will be equal to the focal length of the lens. Similarly, when we undergo reflection phenomenon of plane wave, now by a concave mirror, when a plane mirror, plane wave is reflected by the mirror, it gets converted into spherical wavefronts of radius equal to focal length which is equal to r by 2 where r is the radius of the concave mirror. Thank you.